compression stroke kemudian kita ada kita punya power stroke and then kita ada kita punya exhaust stroke seperti saya katakan tadi eh, we need one stroke 180 degrees of the rotation of the crankshaft so if you we want to complete one cycle consists of four stroke then 4 kali dengan 180 kita dapati 720 degree so in order to get 720 degrees 20 degree the crankshaft eh, need to rotate twice jadi ini bermakna kita rotate dia dua kali baru complete satu cycle ini bermakna bila kita dapati dua rotation of this crankshaft baru ada satu stroke ya, yeah? baru ada satu stroke ingat ya yeah? for induction stroke kita ada W in ya, yeah? W in masa kita sedut udara campur bahan api masuk, kita ada W in compression stroke juga kita ada W in ya, yeah? W in the only stroke yang menghasilkan kerja adalah the power stroke stroke yang ketiga tu, power stroke Eh? and then kita dapati kita ada exhaust stroke the exhaust stroke juga kita perlukan kerja masuk eh? the W in so from this four strokes kita hanya dapat satu saja power satu saja yang menghasilkan positive work whereby the first stroke second stroke and the fourth stroke iaitu intake compression dengan exhaust kita memerlukan kerja Ya, kita memerlukan kerja. Right? So, this is how the working principle of our engine 4 lejang. Ini engine 4 lejang. Kemudian kita lihat ya, untuk engine 2 lejang. Nah, this is engine for two stroke. Okay, this is two stroke engine. Okay, this is uh, kalau saya tak tahu sekarang ni siapa ada pengalaman engine two stroke? Kalau dulu uh, dulu kalau Yamaha 125Z menggunakan two stroke. Eh, banyak untuk on the road sekarang ni banyak yang four stroke lah eh, engine motosikal. Eh, tapi engine two stroke ni dia simple in construction. Alright. Ya, kalau, kalau kita lihat di sini ya. Yeah, Kedua-dua bahagian untuk bahagian bawah di bahagian crankcase dalam bahagian atas yang dikenali sebagai combustion chamber this is our combustion chamber eh this is our crankcase for the two stroke engine kita dapati kita ada dua proses yang berlaku serentak eh now cuba lihat eh ha, ini ialah compression power kalau kita lihat dekat atas ni ni compression ni power compression power compression power Dekat bahagian bawah ni, bila kita lakukan ataupun bila piston bergerak ke bawah, dia akan kompreskan udara campur bahan api di bahagian bawah. Jadi kompreskan di air plus fuel at the crankcase. Lihat eh, this is our intake. This is our transfer port eh. And this is intake. Intake untuk bahagian engine two stroke eh. You see, this is our fuel plus air coming in. Eh, dia masuk dalam crankcase. And then apa yang berlaku, the fresh charge of air plus fuel is being compressed by the bottom part of the piston. And the compress, nampak eh? Naik atas, expand, compress, expand, compress, expand, compress. This compressed air di bahagian bawah ni, kat crankcase ni, akan melalui, melalui apa yang dikatakan sebagai transfer port. This is our transfer port. Cuba lihat eh, bila compressed air di bawah ni, Apabila kita transfer port kita terbuka, kita akan dapati dia akan menolak gas exhaust yang kita telah ignite sebelum tersebut. Lihat eh, compress, transfer. Nampak eh, transfer akan tolak, dia tolak. Nampak eh, transfer port ataupun fresh new charge of fresh of air dengan fuel, dia akan gunakan untuk tolak exhaust gas keluar. Ini specialized, that's why kita gunakan pressurized fuel plus air untuk menolak keluar. Jadi dalam kes kita ini, bila kita punya compressed fresh charge 
of fuel and air digunakan untuk menolak exhaust gas keluar daripada combustion chamber, proses ini dikenali sebagai scavenging. Eh, scavenging. Okey. Lihat. Jadi ini bermakna kita tidak perlu ada exhaust ataupun intake stroke. Eh, kita tidak kita tidak perlukan intake stroke, kita tidak perlukan exhaust stroke pada seperti mana kita perlukan pada kita punya four stroke engine. Eh, because kita lihat untuk two stroke engine ini dia akan menghasilkan dua proses dalam satu masa. Iaitu semasa masuknya fresh charge of air ke dalam engine pada masa yang sama ia digunakan untuk menolak keluar gas exhaust. And then untuk case bagi intake ini kita dapati kita kompreskan dia kita dapati intake ni dilakukan oleh piston di bahagian bawah. That's why untuk engine dual jam kita tak memerlukan loop oil. Eh, kita tak memerlukan loop oil sebab kalau ada loop oil dia kacau proses compression di bahagian bawah. Kita tak perlukan loop oil. That's why engine dual engine dual jam two stroke kita perlukan two T oil. And two that then this two T oil kita campurkan dalam kita punya fuel. Ya, yeah, ada certain percentage lah. Ya, yeah, paling tinggi kita boleh masukkan ialah 1 over 20 parts of loop oil to one fuel. Ataupun paling rendah sekali kita gunakan 1 over 40. Untuk apa? Untuk lubricatekan kita punya piston side ini dengan cylinder wall punya pergerakan. Itu sebab kita lihat engine two stroke dia asap putih keluar banyak. Ya, yeah, asap putih keluar. Asap putih ni adalah akibat daripada incomplete combustion of loop oil ataupun 2T oil yang kita gunakan dalam enjin. Ya, yeah, dalam enjin. Dan cuba kita lihat ya. Yeah, untuk satu pusingan crankshaft ya, yeah, kita akan menghasilkan the complete cycle. Ya, yeah, the complete cycle. Seperti saya terangkan tadi ya, yeah, untuk enjin 4 stroke kita memerlukan Dua pusingan crankshaft to complete one cycle. But for two stroke engine, we only need one rotation of crankshaft to complete the one cycle. Yeah? And this cycle, one of them, the one stroke is consists of the power stroke. Ini bermakna setiap pusingan ada satu power. Setiap pusingan ada satu power. Kalau untuk engine empat lejang, kita ada dua pusingan satu power. Dua pusingan satu power. Itu sebab kalau kita lihat ya, biasanya dekat traffic light lah ya, engine stroke two stroke ni dia raja. Ya, engine two stroke ni kalau dekat traffic light dia raja. Sebab apa? Sebab every rotation ni dia ada one power. Jadi dia punya pick up tinggi. Bandingkan engine four stroke. Ya, sebab engine four stroke kita perlukan dua pusingan satu power. Jadi seolah-olah macam dia punya power tu lambat lah. Ya, yeah, lambat yang berlaku. Okey. Setakat ni ada soalan. Ingat eh, apa kita belajar sekarang ni, kemungkinan besar you all akan juga akan gunakan this engine dalam hidup kita. Yeah, and in our everyday life, we are going to use this type of engine. Either four stroke or two stroke. Yeah, either four stroke or two stroke. Engine two stroke ni biasanya kita gunakan pada engine yang kecil lah. Yeah, engine yang kecil. Contohnya, engine yang digunakan untuk Chainsaw. Eh? Potong pokok. Kita gunakan enjin ini untuk potong. Enjin kecil untuk potong rumput. Kita gunakan enjin kecil ini untuk run the blower. Untuk kita sapu sampah. Ha, ini semua gunakan enjin two stroke. Sebab enjin two stroke ni very simple dia punya construction. Dibandingkan dengan empat stroke dan dia lebih ringan. Dan power dia lebih kerap dibandingkan dengan engine push force rock. Tapi masalahnya adalah masalah emission lah. Eh, sebab kita campurkan 2T dan selalunya engine two stroke ni selalunya dia akan misfire masa low RPM. Jadi itu menyebabkan dia kurang menarik ataupun tidak, tidak di di bandkan penggunaannya di on the road. Eh, on the road. Tapi kalau off road application dia masih Enjin two stroke ni masih mempunyai permintaan yang tinggi. Okay. So guys ada soalan tak? Ada apa nak tanya?
Ha, ini kita kita cerita bincang general dulu eh. Kita tak bincangkan analisis. Dan soalan bagian general ni selalunya soalan yang keluar. Eh, kita kena faham adalah perbezaan antara four stroke dengan two stroke. Perbezaan antara spark ignition engine dengan compression ignition engine. Ha, ini kita kena faham. Nampak tak eh? Kita punya piston part ni eh. Bahkan piston ni kita dapati ada satu bump dekat sini eh. Ada satu bump. Ha, bump ini adalah tujuannya ialah untuk deflect the flow yang masuk daripada crankcase ni untuk menolak eh. Untuk meningkatkan kecekapan apa dikatakan sebagai scavenging efficiency. Eh, scavenging efficiency. Kalau kita boleh tengok ha, untuk two stroke punya piston. Dia punya binaan sebenarnya. Diesel. Ya. Kalau diesel macam mana? Macam mana? Ha, diesel. Diesel untuk petrol, binaan ni sama saja. Tak ada beza apa-apa. Eh? Untuk four stroke. Eh? Cuma yang untuk diesel ni, dia tidak ada spark plug. Eh? Dia tidak ada spark plug. Kalau untuk diesel, eh, kita gunakan the high compression Akibat daripada kita punya peningkatan, ya, peningkatan suhu serta pemampatan, kita gunakan haba ataupun suhu yang terhasil tu untuk mendapatkan ignition. Ya, dapatkan ignition. So, kalau untuk compression, ignition engine, compression ignition engine, the T2 ni penting. Di mana T2 ni adalah compression, suhu selepas compression. P2 over P1 yeah, and minus 1 over N. Jadi T2 ni penting. Sebab T2 ni biasanya kita akan desainkan engine untuk two stroke, untuk post, untuk engine uh, diesel ataupun compression ignition engine. T2 ni kita akan desainkan dia, dia lebih tinggi daripada T ignition bagi fuel. Yang tu diesel. Dan kes kita banyak gunakan diesel lah. Jadi kalau T2 ni, ya, selepas compression process, if the T2 is higher than the T ignition of diesel fuel, <coughs> jadi apa kita dapati, masa kita inject kita punya diesel, dia akan meletup dengan automatic. Ya, dia, akan, dia akan meletup dengan automatic. Sebabkan T2 ni. Ya, dia akan T2. Jadi that's why compression ignition engine, dia kurang. Ya, Uh, dia uh, kurang apa saya kata eh? kurang apa eh? oh dia punya ni dia punya pressure ratio dia eh? kalau untuk engine this engine dia punya P2 over P1 kalau untuk engine diesel ataupun engine CI engine CI dia jauh lebih tinggi dibandingkan dengan P2 over P1 untuk engine SI spark ignition nah, ini adalah untuk engine Diesel, this is engine for petrol. Kita kena desainkan that in such a way we have this. Ya, kita kena desainkan dia. Kita kena design dia. Itu sebab bila kita punya pressure ni lebih tinggi, dia akan menghasilkan torque yang tinggi. Itu sebab kalau kita lihat, eh, engine engine compression ignition ini biasanya untuk kereta atau untuk pay, uh, untuk kenderaan payload yang tinggi. Contohnya trailer, contohnya uh, engine untuk bus. Ya, yeah. biasanya digunakan engine compression ignition sebab dia boleh menghasilkan tok yang tinggi because of this. Dia punya compression ratio dia lebih tinggi atau punya pressure ratio nya lebih tinggi daripada engine SI. Tapi dia lambat sikit lah. Yeah, dia lambat sikit. Ya, yeah, sebab kita perlukan high compression untuk menghasilkan ignition dibandingkan dengan engine SI. Enjin SI ni menggunakan petrol dengan respon cepat dibandingkan dengan enjin diesel. Okay. So ni konsep yang digunakan lah. Eh? How to get the ignition. Kalau untuk enjin SI, spark ignition. Yeah, SI adalah spark ignition. Kita memerlukan pertolongan spark plug untuk menyalakan pembakaran petrol dengan air. Tapi kalau untuk enjin CI, kita tak perlukan spark plug because of the high pressure ratio akan menghasilkan high temperature after compression process 
And when this T2 is greater than the T ignition of the diesel fuel, maka bila ketika itu kita injectkan diesel dalam kita punya combustion chamber, right before compression process, dia automatically dia akan terbakar. Okay? Ada soalan lain? Thank you, sir. Okay. Ada soalan lain? Apa ada, ada, ada siapa yang kaki motor tak? Kat sini. Tak ada siapa yang kaki motor ke? Uh, doctor. Yes. I have a question. Uh, what is the use of the counterbalance? Counterbalance? Okay, good question. This counterbalance, right? This is called counterbalance kat bawah ni. Ini tengah pusing ni counterbalance. Ni rotating kan? It's rotating. Nampak tak? Piston ni pun ada, ada weight. Corn rod ni pun ada weight. Jadi this counterbalance is basically to kill off. Eh, to balance the forces of the opposite way. Kalau tak ada counterbalance ni, kita punya engine akan vibrate excessively. You see? Kalau kita ada pusing ni, kita ada daya empah kan? Ada daya empah. Ha, sini ada daya empah because of the piston weight. And this counterbalance akan balancekan the daya empah, the centrifugal force because of this rotating. So the counterbalance is to make the engine balance dynamically. Eh, to need to 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 reduce the vibration. Okay? Okay, you are. Yeah, doctor, understood. Thank you. Okay. Any other question? Yeah, yeah. Untuk engine two stroke this is for stroke where is my two stroke engine I need counter balance I need two stroke engine what is it I need to say I'm going to put it two stroke engine ok untuk two stroke engine I want to say this untuk two stroke engine dia tidak ada wav eh dia tidak ada valve. Untuk two stroke engine, perbezaan antara two stroke dan four stroke, untuk for two stroke engine, there is no valve. You see? The opening of intake and exhaust is by the piston body. Yang ada piston ni eh, ha, dia tutup, buka. Tutup untuk ini intake. Ini ialah intake port. Ini dia panggil ports. Kita ada port saja. Ini kita ada port saja. Lihat? Untuk buka, tutup, The transfer port atau intake, intake ni ialah because of the open and closing of the port due to the body of the piston. Sama juga untuk exhaust eh. Lihat ni exhaust. Yang exhaust akan buka dahulu eh. Bandingkan dengan kita ni intake. Sebab dia akan tutup buka because of this movement of the piston. And then this valve, ini dikenali sebagai rib valve. Yeah, rib valve. This valve is open and closed due to the different pressure between the atmospheric and the vacuum pressure created in this crankcase. So, tu sebab engine two stroke ni, dia punya benaannya lebih lebih mudah dibandingkan dengan engine four stroke. Engine four stroke, kita kena ada all the linkages mechanically, all the valve is opening and closing because of mechanical movement. Tapi dalam kes untuk this two stroke engine, kita perlukan port saja, and the ports open and close for intake and exhaust. The ports open because due to the movement of the piston. And for the trunk, for the intake sini, kita gunakan rib valve. Ini dipanggil rib valve. And this rib valve is being activated due to the different pressure of atmospheric dengan intake atau crankcase. Kita ada vacuum di sini. Bila vacuum sini tinggi, Pressure ke atmospheric ting, uh, uh, sorry, the vacuum ni rendah, the atmospheric tinggi, so automatically this rib valve akan buka. Okay? Ada soalan lagi? Ni ada question guys? 
Okey, kalau tak ada question saya nak tunjukkan ni satu satu video clip berkenaan dengan engine SMD about 2 minutes punya punya presentation eh. So kita tengok sama-sama eh. Okay. So this is our cylinder. Eh, cylinder. Apa yang ada pada cylinder block ni cuma lubang saja. So this uh, this uh, engine eh ialah untuk engine four cylinder engine eh four cylinder engine. So kita ada cylinder number 1, number 2, number 3 and number 4. So this is our crankshaft. Nah, ini yang you buat cakap eh this is our, our counterbalance eh. Kita ada 1 2 3 4 counterbalance eh because kita nak balance kan dengan piston yang ada 4 tadi. So apa kita buat kita akan pasangkan kita punya crankshaft pada kita punya block. Ha, ini kita panggil dia sebagai flywheel eh. This is flywheel. Eh, eh, guys, boleh be nampak guys? Boleh nampak tak? Boleh sir. Boleh, okay. This is our flywheel. Remember tak saya katakan tadi eh, engine four stroke. Kita cuma ada satu saja power stroke. Where else the intake, the compression and the exhaust kita perlukan kerja. Yang kita perlukan kerja. Jadi untuk kerja bagi stroke satu intake compression dengan kita punya exhaust we need this flywheel. Jadi tenaga yang dihasilkan semasa proses ataupun pada stroke power tu part of energy will be conserved in this flywheel. And then bila kita piston perlukan so it will take the energy in term of inertia pada flywheel. Eh? So this is the wheel, the flywheel ataupun extra count, extra weight yang kita perlukan untuk menghasilkan kerja bagi intake, compression dengan kita punya exhaust stroke. So this is our, our cylinder head yang part eh. This is cylinder head. Okay, this type of engine is double overhead camshaft eh. Kita nampak ada a row of uh, valve untuk intake and a row of valve untuk exhaust. Then it's being uh, activated by two crank uh, cam camshaft eh, camshaft. So this is our two camshaft. Yeah, two camshaft. So D, this is called as the DOHC, double overhead camshaft engine. So yang bawah yang tadi ni, inilah kita punya loop oil pump eh, loop oil pump. You see, we are taking part of the work from the crankshaft to run the loop oil pump. And we have another, another set of uh, chain right here. This chain is taken also, the movement taken from the, road, from the crankshaft adalah untuk memusingkan kita punya camshaft to make the movement of the valve. This is our rocker arm cover, yeah. Our, our rocker arm, our our, our valve cover, eh? Sin head cover. And this is our crankcase, eh? Untuk takungkan kita beli loop oil, eh? To drain our loop oil.
This is all the accessories lah yang kita perlukan eh. Kita ada kita punya alternator, eh? kita ada kita punya water pump for cooling of the engine. And this is our starter motor, eh? starter motor yang hitam ni, starter motor untuk start the engine, to crank the engine for starting. I need pump to fuel. Eh, to be fuel pump. Ah, ini kita punya intake manifold. Our spark plug. Uh, this for our water pump, yeah, water pump to circulate can the the water, cooling water. You see all the, yeah, all the movement semua kita ambil dari perkeringan shaft ya yeah, untuk jalankan engine ni. This is our alternator. Ya, alternator untuk menghasilkan kuasa elektrik untuk enjin. Ya, kita perlukan kuasa elektrik ya untuk untuk enjin ini. Oh sorry, this is this is our, our alternator. Yang tadi ni bakal tadi ni compressor untuk aircon ni. Ya, this is our, our, our alternator untuk menghasilkan kuasa elektrik. Is your exhaust manifold? Okay, now we try to look at the engine operation. So this is this is the mechanical part of the engine, all the movement, yeah, the engine daddy, yeah. Okay, now kita tengok the the ni the processes yang terjadi ya eh, dalam engine. You see the blue color eh, the blue color ni intake, the, the red color is exhaust. This is our injector eh, warna hijau ni, this is our injector untuk inject fuel dalam kita chamber. Okay, I think that's it for our presentation, presentation of the actual engine, eh? actual engine. Okay, so right now what we are going to do is to look at the fundamental 
of engine design yeah fundamental of engine design so the basic of the engine design is to look at the engine with regards of the air yang dikatakan sebagai air standard cycle yeah? air standard cycle jadi any any engine design the very basic to design it we always look at the air standard cycle first right so apa yang ada pada air standard cycle Right, so kita ada what is being called as the analysis ya. Eh? Asana cycle ni macam kanu cycle lah eh. Dia merupakan kita punya theoretical cycle. The limitation or the limit of our theoretically lah. Dia punya maximum condition ya. Eh? So, kalau kita lihat untuk power plant, biasa kita gunakan kanu cycle. Eh? Kanu cycle. Kalau untuk uh, gas plant, kita gunakan Brayton cycle. Okay. Then, of course, eh, any any engine ataupun any thermodynamic cycle, kita kena lihat dari segi apa yang dikatakan sebagai thermal efficiency. Whereby, the thermal efficiency is uh, being derived as the work net divided by the Q-in. Or the energy out equal to the beneficial energy out divided by the heat input or the engine input so if you can if you can sketch the cycle on a pv diagram yeah, this it will look like like this yeah yang red color ni ini ialah bukan proses yang sebenar yang berlaku dalam kita punya air standard cycle eh tapi to ease of the analysis we will assume that the black color yeah, the actual cycle dengan ideal cycle kita gunakan analysis untuk ideal cycle which is the black in color dia punya proses ya yeah, dia punya proses ini kita dah lihat well, the construction the actual construction of an engine right bila kita lihat for individual process ini kita punya ideal masih ideal lagi ya eh. so this is the assumption ya eh, bila kita nak lahirkan an ideal gas cycle ataupun based on standard air cycle So these are all the assumption just to make our analysis become easy, right? Ini lah kano cycle yang kita dah belajar masa temu dynamic, ya yeah, masa temu dynamic. Tadi kita, kita punya one two adalah reversible adiabatic. No, sorry, isothermal, isothermal, reversible isothermal expansion. Dua ketiga ni adalah bukan kita punya reversible adiabatic expansion. Tiga keempat merupakan kita punya reverse uh, reversible isothermal compression dan empat satu adalah kita punya reversible adiabatic compression. Ya. Yeah. Dan kita dah buktikan di sisa Kano cycle punya thermal efficiency. Dan kalau kita lihat pada TS diagram it would look like this, ya. Yeah. Dalam kes ni kita tak lukiskan saturation line because we are assuming it is air ataupun gas. Yeah? Unless kalau kita lihat steam dan kita belajar pada steam cycle, dia ada saturation line. So in order to have the air standard cycle, we need to get or we need to apply what is being called as the air standard assumption. So it's very important for us to remember remember what are the assumption made in order to come up with the air standard cycle. First, the working fluid is air. Secondly, all the processes made up of internally reversible process. Third, the combustion, eh, the combustion process kita apply as a heat transfer input. Eh, heat transfer input. And lastly, the exhaust, yeah, kita applykan heat transfer rejected. This is the heat transfer input. This is the heat transfer rejected. Air is our working fluid. And all processes, yeah, dia adalah bukan internally irreversible. And while while applying this assumption, kita juga kena lihat kepada apa yang dikatakan sebagai cold air standard assumption. 
iaitu semasa kita solvekan atau kita analyzekan this uh, air standard cycle, kita akan dapatkan all the properties needed adalah pada whole air assumption. Iaitu kita anggap contohnya kalau kita ambil nilai CP, nilai CV, nilai gamma, nilai R, ya semuanya kita ambil pada whole air assumption iaitu dia berada pada suhu 25 darjah Celsius. Okay, so we apply this four plus one assumption to come up with the air standard cycle. Nah, ini yang dikatakan sebagai untuk case bagi tiga dengan empat ya. Tiga dengan empat. Ini yang sebenar eh. This is the actual eh. Contohnya ini ialah kita supplykan air. Supplykan energy eh. This is actual air plus fuel masuk dalam silinder kita kompas. Tetapi kalau untuk air standard cycle, kita gantikan this process dengan heat transfer. Ya, yeah, dengan heat transfer. Jadi kita heat up the air pada heat addition punya proses dan kita gunakan heat rejected pada kita punya exhaust proses. Okay. So this is uh, kita lihat kepada binaan kita punya engine tadi. Now we are going to introduce by one parameter call as the compression ratio. Ingat eh? This is compression ratio. Just now I mentioned about the pressure ratio. Kalau pressure ratio is pressure divided by pressure. Kalau compression ratio dia adalah volume divided by volume. Okay. And the definition of the R value ni atau compression ratio adalah the maximum volume divided by the minimum volume. Di mana Pada maximum volume, kita punya piston berada pada BDC dan kita punya minimum volume, kita punya piston berada pada TDC ataupun this volume juga kita kenalikan ini sebagai clearance volume. Ya, yeah, clearance volume. So, this is the movement of the piston, right? When the piston at this part, and this is our BDC. When the piston at towards the utmost location is called as the TDC. Sama seperti yang kita belajar untuk compressor. Eh? And this movement from BDC to TDC is called the stroke. And the volume covered by this stroke, this stroke is called the sweat volume. Eh? Sweat volume. Okay. Ataupun dikatakan juga sebagai displacement volume. So if we look at the volume as far as volume is concerned, the maximum volume when the piston is at the BDC. So this is our V max. And kita punya clearance volume ya, ataupun V min ianya berada pada kita punya TDC. Right? So the V max apa dia? The V max adalah kita punya sweat volume plus clearance volume. Eh, that is our V max. Or this place, Vs, Vs is this red color, a shaded red color. This is Vs, eh, Vs. Tapi kalau kita lihat pada V max, V max adalah the Vs plus Vc, eh, Vs plus Vc. So if you plot the PV diagram, you plot the PV diagram. So this should be the process look like the compression process. Heat addition, the expansion process, heat rejected. Okay. If we could get the area of this cycle, okay, this cycle, if the area could be determined, then the area will give us what is being called as the W net. Okay, W net. And this W net, in to normalize this W net, to compare, right, from one engine to another engine with the same stroke, with the same Vs, we are going to represent the area as a rectangle area. So this area of W net, is equal to this area of the rectangle. Ok. 
Okay. I repeat eh. This area of W net with the actual or the based on the S standard cycle, we can represent this <coughs> sorry. We can represent this volume as a rectangle volume with the same movement of stroke V max to V min. Alright? So the area of this is the same as the area of this, but this is a rectangle shape. And the pressure rect, eh, when we read the pressure of this rectangle, the height of this rectangle, this re the height of this rectangle is called as the mean effective pressure. Okay, mean effective pressure. So what is W net? Based on this rectangle, the W net is equal to the mean effective pressure multiplied by this V max minus V min. Right? So this is our first parameter. This is our second parameter, which is called as mean effective pressure. What is the purpose of this mean effective pressure? The purpose of this mean effective pressure is the is purposely to compare one engine to another engine. Guys, uh, this is a 200cc. What is CC? Yeah. What is CC? Sometimes we, we buy cars, kan? The car usually dia akan represent by the CC. Kan kita ada kalau kita kereta apa ya? Kalau kita kereta katakan kereta uh, persona ya. Eh? Persona dia is a 1,600cc. Sometimes we also refer as 1.6 liter. Yang ini kita refer juga sebagai 2.0 liter. What is CC? Cubic centimeter. Yes. Eh? So, this CC is actually the unit of volume. Cubic centimeter. Called CC. Okay. Called as C. CC. Okay. Let's say we want to compare two types of engine. Let's say Proton engine and Toyota engine. Both having the same capacity. Eh? Both having the same capacity, which is uh, 1.6 liter. It's also 1.6 liter. Okay. How do we compare the performance of both of these both of this engine? And before that, let's see the MEP first. Okay, this is our PV diagram. So this is our actual cycle based on S standard cycle. This is what we get. Right? And when we refer to the MEP, you see this MEP always started at the TDC. Okay, TDC. So this is our TDC. This is our BDC. So we are going to get this W net as a rectangle shape. This is our rectangle shape. Whereby the W net is the same. And this is called this MEP. Now, based on this TDC BDC, this W net, the, the diagram can be shifted. Okay, the diagram can be shifted based on our ambient condition. This diagram can be going up with the same W net. It could be going down with the same W net. Okay, so if you want, if we want to compare proton and delta engine, we have to normalize this type of diagram. 
because maybe Proton and Toyota will give us different WNET. But the stroke is the same. Okay, but different WNET. The stroke is the same. So maybe what we could we could get, maybe this is for Toyota. Okay, when we calculate for Proton, maybe we can go a bit higher. Okay, this is for Proton. The WNET is actually, the MEP actually is pressure, because this is pressure, right? So if you have the choice, given the MEP for both engine, which engine are you going to buy? Which engine are you going to buy? With the same capacity. Remember that? The rectangle area represent the WNET. This, okay, this is the VS. These are the VS. Same VS. If you have the choice, which engine are you going to buy? Are you going to buy the Toyota or going to buy the Proton? Let's see lah. Jangan, jangan tengok Proton lah ya. Maybe engine A or engine B lah. Eh? This is engine A. This is engine B. Let's see. Uh, which, which, which engine are you going to buy? Guys? Uh, engine with WNET yang highest. Yeah? Uh, engine with WNET yang highest. Yes. We are going to buy the engine which have the WNET is higher. Although the engine is the same swap. 1.6 liter, 1.6 liter or 1,600cc, 1,600cc. But you are going to buy, in this case, you are going to buy the higher MEP. Because the higher MEP with the same VS, you are going to get more work in terms of work net. You see? This is engine B W net, which you have you have extra compared to engine A. This is the extra power produced by this engine B. That's what we use for MEP. The MEP is being used to normalize, okay? To normalize the pressure. Actually, this pressure is, does not exist. Actually, the MEP does not exist. But it could be used as in an indicator to see which engine with the same category. In this case, the category that we use is the 1.6. Which engine are giving us the higher W net? So we go for that. Okay? Because this will represent the economical usage of energy whereby you can save your if you use the energy to produce the same double net then you are you going to use less fuel okay less fuel that is what MEP represent represent the double net and if you have a choice which MEP are you going to select to choose you are going to select and choose the higher MEP. But please remember, we need to categorize the same category. You cannot compare 1.6 and 1.8 or 1.6 and 2.0. Of course, the engine of 2.0 will produce more work. You only can compare between the same category. 1.6, 1.6, 1.5, 1.5, 1.0, 1.0. Okay, any question guys as far as the MEP is concerned? So please remember the definition of our R. Yeah, our R value and also the definition of MEP. And the usage of MEP. Okay. 
Any question? So this is called as ball, this is called as stroke, this is BDC, this is TDC, so this is VS. Okay, this is VS, this is VC. Okay, this is VS, this is VC. Any question, guys? All right. Next, uh, this is our air standard cycle. The, the upper part is the actual four stroke engine. The second part is the ideal air standard cycle engine. <coughs> this engine, we are talking about the spark ignition engine. Okay, what is the meaning of spark ignition engine? Or the SI, some, some, sometimes we refer as SI engine. What is SI engine? Normal petrol call, engines. Yeah, yeah. Why, why, why we call as uh, this is used for for petrol engine? That's right. Why do we call it spark engine engine? Guys, why do we call it a spark engine engine? Because the fuel ignited by the spark plugs. Eh? That's right. The initiation of combustion process is by a spark plug. You can see here, this is the actual engine for stroke. This is the intake, compression. Before the piston reaches the top light center, the spark plug will ignite. Will, 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 uh, the spark plug will give spark. And then to initiate the combustion, this is our power stroke. This is our exhaust stroke. Intake stroke. Okay, intake stroke, the intake valve will open. Yeah, okay, take note eh. Yang ni tak nampak valve open. The intake valve should open. Kita punya power stroke, both valve close. Yeah. And then kita punya, oh this is a, sorry, this is a compression stroke. Sorry yeah, guys. This is a compression stroke, both valve close. This is a power stroke, both valve close. This is the exhaust stroke. The Exhaust bus valve open, and this is our intake stroke. The intake valve open, but in terms of sequence, we have intake, right? Intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Okay. So let us look at the at the compression stroke. The compression stroke is from BDC from this point up to this point. Okay, this is our compression stroke. From this point, the BDC to TDC, this point. You see, before reaching the TDC, the spark will give ignition from this spark plug. See, before, eh? it's not right, it's not immediately right on the dot of B TDC, before. Usually about, uh, maybe about 10%, no, sorry, 10 degree before top leg center. Okay, so this is our end of our combustion. Then after that, we have the expansion process. So from here, from D, TDC up to BDC, this is our expansion process. Okay, our expansion process. Then after that, from the BDC to TDC again, we have our ex exhaust stroke. Here, our valve, intake valve will open under overlapping. Eh? We call it overlapping. And after that, we have intake stroke. And then everything continue again. And then repeat again. Now, C at the PATM. The, P -E, the PATM is usually in the middle of the pressure of intake and exhaust. This is your PATM in the middle. Okay. So this is the actual stroke. This is called as the power stroke. Okay, the first loop. The upper loop is called the power stroke. And the bottom loop, where is for exhaust and intake, this is also this is also called as the pumping loop. Okay, pumping loop. The upper one from here, right here, till here, this is called the power stroke or the power loop. The okay, power loop. And then for the exhaust and intake, this loop, this loop is called as the pumping loop. Okay, pumping loop. So that is for the actual, okay, the actual 
diagram or the PV diagram. Okay. Let me see if can I can get the, the, the real data from, from, from an engine. So guys, this is our real engine data. Okay, this is our real engine data. Okay, we get from the engine. Whereby the engine is being equipped with a pressure transducer and also another equipment called as the crank angle encoder. So this is the actual data. But we simplified becoming this data as our standard bicycle. Right? Okay. Then we go to the next set. This the next set is called as the air standard cycle type of engine. Compression, assuming as reversible and adiabatic. This is the heat addition, assuming as isochoric. This is the heat rejection. Uh, sorry, this is compression. This is a expansion process, assuming as a reversible adiabatic. And this is the heat rejection, assuming as isochoric. All right? So the process from one to two, this is one to two, the compression process. Reversible adiabatic, also known as isentropic. So one to two. And then we have the heat addition process, assuming isochoric V constant, two to three. And then three to four is our expansion process, assuming reversible adiabatic which is also known as asentropic. And lastly, the heat ejection is 4 to 1 as isochoric. So from this actual cycle, we are going to transform to our air standard cycle. So this is called as the air standard cycle. And this particularly cycle is for spark ignition, which also known as the auto cycle. Okay, also known as the auto cycle. You see right here, ideal auto cycle. Okay, ideal auto cycle. This auto cycle is mainly for the analysis of spark ignition engine. Engine which run on petrol, engine which run on gas. Okay, if you have C if your CNG, LPG engine. So this is the basic air standard cycle for those type of engine. Any engine using spark plug to initiate the ignition process or the combustion process. So this is what we have. This is the Q in, Q out. Everything is a closed system. Okay, there's no valve for air standard cycle. There's no intake valve. There's no exhaust valve. Intake or the supply of heat and rejected of heat is done externally by heat transfer. Therefore, at any point of time, the working fleet is always air. Okay, the working fleet is always air. Now, we are going to get our double net. We are going to get our thermal efficiency. All right. So this is the explanation of the stroke, which is uh, sketched on the S diagram. 
this I have mentioned before. For first stroke, we need two revolution of the crankshaft to complete one cycle, which is equivalent to four stroke. For two stroke engine, we need the one revolution of the crankshaft in order to produce two stroke, which consists of one cycle. So this is one, two, isentropic compression, two, three, constant volume heat addition, three, four, isentropic expansion, four, one, constant volume heat rejection. Okay. Now this is uh, represent the two stroke engine. Okay, two stroke engine. I have mentioned this before. Let me explain to you how it works for a two stroke engine and four stroke engine. Now we are going to look at this uh, S and cycle. We are going to look at the thermal efficiency, the quality. Okay, the quality. Just to recap back our thermodynamic for closed system. So this is our auto cycle. One, two, three, four, one. Direction of process. Okay, so let us look the process of one to two. What is the energy involved from one to you one? Okay, remember this is our PVK equal to constant. Same goes for this. This is PVK equal to constant. Isentropic compression, isentropic expansion. PVK meaning that isentropic which is reversible adiabatic. So if we look at the process 1 to 2, this will give us U1. What we have 1 to 2 is adiabatic. Okay, it's adiabatic. And we put in work W12. This is equal to U2. So this is the first law of thermodynamic for closed system. You can still remember the energy balance. The energy initial plus the energy transfer in equal to the energy final plus the energy transfer out. In one to two, we have don't we don't have any energy transfer out, but we do have the energy input because this is a compression process. And as for the T two to three, whereby what we have right here, we are going to have the input of energy in terms of Q two three. Sorry, Q two three. Okay, and when we write our energy balance equation, which is the first law of thermodynamic closed system, this is U2 plus energy transfer in Q23 equal to the final energy U3. From here, we could determine what is Q23, which is equal to U3 minus U2. And for ideal gas, this is MCV E3 minus T2. Okay, in this case, for, for this one, we are going to have the W12 is equal to U2 
minus u1. So this is the input of work for the process of 1, 2. And then process of 3, 4, which is the power stroke. Again, we have the initial energy, which is u3, plus energy input, energy transfer in, there's none, it's adiabatic. This is equal to the u4, plus the energy transfer out, which is w3, 4. Okay, W34. And if you want to de determine the W34, this is equal to, again, W34 is a U3 minus U4 equal to MCV T3 minus T4. This case, this is W. 1, 2 equal to M, C, V, T, 2 minus T, 1. And lastly, is 4 to 1. Initial energy U4, there's no energy input in the transfer in, which is equal to, but we do have energy transfer out, which is Q41. This is a W12 in. This is W34 out. Okay, so this for 4 to 1, U, U4 plus, sorry, equal to U1 plus energy transfer out, which is Q41, which is equal to, oh, sorry, uh, Q41, which is equal to, U4 minus U1 equal to MCV T4 minus T1. So this is the analysis as far as the work and also heat involved. Our interest is what? Our interest is to get the W net. What is W net? The W net is equal to sigma W. Because this is a cycle, then the sigma W is equal to the sigma Q. As for the sigma W, this is equal to W34 minus W12. And if we get the sigma W net, sigma W through this sigma Q, then this should be Q in, which is 2, 3, minus Q rejected, 4, 1. And of course, we are going to have the MEP. In this case, is equal to W net divided by the V max minus V min. Okay. And as for the thermal efficiency for auto cycle, this is equal to W net divided by Q in. In this case, the W net, we are going to use this formula. Q23 minus Q41 divided by our Q in is Q23. Then this is equal to 1 minus Q Four one divided by Q two three. All right, and then we continue this process, this analysis.
as this. This is our Q out, which is equal to Q41 divided by Q in, which is Q23. Then we put the formula, which I have written just now. And this is uh, equal to assuming that the M C V is constant because it's a closed system. The M is constant. The same gas closed system is for air. The M C V we can cancel it off. Okay, we can cancel it off. So what we have is one minus T four minus T one divided by T1, T3 minus T2. And then if we look at the process of 1, 2, the T1 or T2 can be written as a V2 over V1, power of K minus 1. Alright? And we know that the V2 is equal to V3 and V1 equal to V4. Then it can be, be write as V3 over T4, and this is equal to T4 over T3. Okay, then we try to substitute this T1, T2 in terms of T4 and T3 or vice versa. We can put this T4 in terms of T1 or the T2, the T3 in terms of T2. Then what we have right here, assuming the definition of R, which is the compression ratio, V max over V min. In this case, our V max, right? The V max is at BDC, which is V1, which is V1. And the V min at TDC, which is equal to V2. Then we can reduce this formula becoming as this. Okay, which is equal to 1 minus 1 over R power of K minus 1. We know that the K value is constant. Okay. Meaning that the thermal efficiency could be increased when we increase the compression ratio. Okay. When we increase the compression ratio. So guys, please, eh? Please try to solve eh, from what I have written right here. From this point, please continue and please prove it. Okay, please prove it. Thermal efficiency auto cycle is equal to 1 minus 1 over compression ratio k minus 1 okay k minus 1 where the r value is equal to the v max divided by v min in this case this is a v 1 divided by V2. Okay, if you look right here, what our V max, this is our V max V1 equal to V4, and the V min is V2 equal to V3. Okay, so trying to prove very famous question for the air standard cycle either for exam or for test. But I don't think this semester we are going to test on the ICE because we are going to have test one is on compressor. We did it last week. Then second test will be on the steam power plant. And the third test will be on the gas turbine. So meaning that this question is for exam question. And this, this, this chapter is for exam question. Okay.
So what is the limit of R? Okay, what is the limit of R? Again, we know that the T2 is equal to T1 V over V K minus 1 over K Okay, can someone advise me which V divided by which V? Sorry uh, sorry, this is k minus 1, not k minus 1, okay. k minus 1. Which v minus which v? Yeah. It's t2 over t1, t2, this is v1 over v2, correct? From here. I need to know the t2. So what is t2? t2 equal to t1, v1 over v2. From this equation, what is T2? T2 Guys, hello. V1 divided by V2. V1 divided by V2. So what is V1 by V2? This is R, right? This is R. Meaning what? When we increase the V1 over V2, what happened to T2? It increased the value. What happened to T2? It yes, also increased, correct? Also increased, correct? Okay, now. This is V2. Alright, V2. Increase the compression ratio, we are going to increase the T2. Dalam engine, dalam engine untuk petrol, what do we induce in? In the actual engine. Apa yang kita masukkan dalam engine? Untuk actual engine? Untuk spark ignition engine? Uh, fuel air mixture. Yes. Fuel plus air mixture. Okay. Fuel plus air mixture. Or petrol plus air. Okay. So, if the T2 is greater than the T ignition for petrol, what happened? Misfiring, sir. Yes. Not misfiring. Automatic automatic combustion. Automatic ignition. Okay? Automatic ignition. You see? If you look carefully at the piston cylinder device, for the real engine, this is our TDC. While compression, okay, while compression, let's say the T2, because of this high compression ratio, the T2 will be achieved at this point. And this is the way the T2 is achieved. Because we adjust this. So this is the point where, where T2 exists. But please remember, in here, we have the mixture of fuel plus air. Okay, the blue color represents fuel. The red color represents air. So when the T2, and this is our spark plug. Okay, so when this T2 achieved right here, let's say the spark plug is on 
at TDC. When T2 is reaches at this certain given compression ratio, meaning that we are going to have self ignition. Okay, we are going to have self ignition, but the spark plug does not give any spark yet because the timing is about 10% or 5% before top dead center. So if we increase this compression ratio, so we are going to have an early combustion caused by the auto ignition. Okay, this is cause will cause the auto ignition, which we don't want. Okay, which we don't want for a petrol engine. You see, the piston is going up, reaches T two, boom, combustion. Okay, combustion. The combustion that we need is from the spark from the spark plug. This is T2, this combustion is basically based on the auto ignition. You see, what happened is the piston is going up, still going up, still going up, but the auto ignition caused the combustion process to happen, meaning that while going the piston going up, we have combustion as though there is force going to push down the piston which we don't want you see you are you are put, you are moving the piston going up because of this auto emission because the high compression ratio high compression ratio produce t2 which is higher than the t emission for petrol then the auto ignition will occur. This is no good. It could damage your piston. Okay, you will have a hole on the piston and you will have your valve. Okay, the valve will bend. Okay, if the valve bend, meaning that you cannot seal the intake and exhaust gas properly. And this occur, this is called as knocking. Okay, when this occur, this is called as knocking. No good. Okay, this is called knocking. That is what being mentioned right here. Okay, in SI engine, the compression ratio is limited. You see, the R value V1 or V2 is limited by auto ignition. And in other words, it's limited by the T2. Or called also as engine knock. This is called knocking. It's usually, when it ha happens, it's usually you can hear as a knock. And the knocking sound as though that you have a steel or you take your hammer you knock your hammer on a steel. That type of knocking that you will hear. And this will cause, yeah, again I tell you, this will cause a hole in your piston and your valve stem, okay, the valve stem will bend. So when your valve stem bended, then you are not going to have a proper seal during the exhaust or the intake valve process. So we have limit. Okay? Don't just increase. Huh? Because when you increase, you see from our analysis, when you increase this, the, the compression ratio, we are going to increase the auto cycle. The, the thermal efficiency for the auto cycle. So the limitation is based on the knocking phenomena or the auto ignition parameter. So this is very basic of engine design.
okay so if you have a gas engine you let, let's say you have alcohol to be used as your fuel or maybe you have your other type of uh, gas methane gas butane gas eh? ethylene gas so all this uh, compression ratio is limited by the auto ignition characteristic of this fuel that's why in ci engine we could go higher compression ratio because the temperature of auto ignition for compression ignition engine which is using using diesel because the high auto ignition temperature for diesel okay so that is the limitation any question guys Uh, sir, how about the NGV, sir? NGV, the same as auto cycle. NGV still have the spark plug to initiate the combustion process. You know what is NGV? Yes, a natural gas ribbon rig. In Malaysia, call as what? It's called as natural gas. Okay, natural gas vehicle. What type of gas they use? Anybody? Anybody? Petroleum gas. Petroleum gas, yes. Of course, the petroleum gas. What type of gas? We have NGV. NGV. Natural gas vehicle they use c and g compress natural gas in nature this is basically is methane Can you give me an example of methane? Can you give me a very simple example of what is methane? Where, can, where, 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 where we can find methane? Huh. Guys. Methane is basically CH4. Where do you find methane? Natural gas, right? Yes. How how do we get natural gas, Tiva? Can we produce ourselves methane gas? Uh, isn't it from like a uh, compost material, doctor? Yes, it's compost material. But I'm asking you, can we produce ourselves methane gas? Not sure, doctor. Allah, but not sure, ke? Eh, kentut lah, Tiva. Ah, yeah. <laughs> ah, then have natural gas. So, if you want to fight, you put, you put a, a, let's say you put a, a source of fire, it will combust. Okay, our fat is natural gas, it's compost, compost material, what we eat, okay, stay in our stomach and then it compost, then it, methane will be produced. But this natural gas, we get from the oil rig. Okay, oil rig. You know that if we have a well, a petroleum well, right? The first part, you see, this is our crude oil. The first part of the storage of the well is usually is natural gas, which is methane. Okay, methane. Before this, we have also gas type of vehicle which we use lpg and this lpg is basically is from propane you know what is lpg liquefied petroleum gas this is naturally the methane is naturally obtained but lpg 
of the propane is byproduct of distillation process. Where can we find LPG? Right? Where, where we can find LPG? Our tong gas masak, sir. That's right. The cooking gas is LPG. Okay, the cooking gas is LPG. Gas masak tu. There is LPG. In Singapore, in Singapore, if if anyone realizes, they don't call their vehicle as NGV. This is for Malaysia. In Singapore, they call as CNG. If you look, okay, if you can, if you see a car and stating a green color label as CNG, this is equivalent to NGV in Malaysia. Right? But this type of car usually is not, it's not popular in Malaysia. Okay? It's not popular in Malaysia. Why? Because it's very hard to get the supply of CNG. Okay? Very hard to get the supply of CNG. If not mistaken, uh, there are several outlets in Lebah Klang. Okay, be before this, uh, before this is not uh, mistaken, uh, when I did this some, some, some study on the CNG, I could get the CNG way back in uh, 2015. I think the nearest is uh, at uh, Shah Alam. Then we have to take it from Shah Alam. But right now, I'm not sure Pago, there is, Pago still has CNG or not, the supply of CNG. Because the problem of CNG, the tank of CNG will occupy one third of a normal car. Let's say you have proton wajah, right? So your booth, your luggage compartment will be reduced to one third because you have to put in your CNG tank, which will be taken one third of your space of the booth. And one more thing, it's not popular because one tank, the weight is still tank being used. The weight of that tank is about 45 kilograms. So meaning that either you are using petrol or not using petrol, you have an extra weight in your car. 45 kilograms is equivalent to a normal person. So you have one extra normal person. And another thing which is not popular of using the CNG or the NGV is you have to recharge your tank. You have to replenish the storage of tank every 150 kilometer of distance. Okay. For example, if you want to go from here to Kuala Lumpur, then you have to refill your CNG at Pago. You must fill. If you don't fill, you are finished. Okay, you are finished. And another thing which is not popular is because of the valve design. Okay, the valve design. What happened in Malaysia, we convert to CNG for what we have right now, the engine design, what we have in the car, we just convert by using conversion kit. Okay, by using conversion kit. The design of the engine, the valve is designed for wet valve. It's called as wet valve, meaning that you need the wetness of the fuel to lubricate your valve. But when you use CNG, okay, when you use CNG, it's very dry. There's no liquid in the CNG. So what happened? Your valve will become sompe apa eh? Saya selalu, saya selalu lupa tentang sompe. Sompe apa eh? What is the, the in English is so, for sompe? Saya lupa eh? Anybody? So sompe. Pinggan sompe. Eh, ingat? What is sompe? Sompe. Sompe in English. Oh, yeah. 
Sumpit maksudnya sumpit. Ah, in what is English? Ini dia. Crooked gigi pula. Ada crooked pula. Ini macam pinggan kan, sir? Ya? Is it like a pinggan or what? Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Like our ceramic, uh, let's say our ceramic pinggan kan. Kalau dia kita kita hit something and then they 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 chip all ah, they chip all. Oh. The chipping, the, the chipping of the chipping of the the bar. So kalau kita ada that type of uh, chipping, then kita tak ada seal lah. Eh, tak ada seal. That's why it's, it's not popular lah in Malaysia because the engine is designed for petrol, but we use the engine. So guys, I think that's it for today. I want to introduce you about uh, the auto cycle, the, the general term or the general introduction of the engine and then a bit on the uh, auto cycle. Okay, tomorrow what we're going to do, maybe we are look at the example for auto cycle eh, as far as a standard cycle is concerned. Okay, so let me take your attendance first. Any question guys? Not from me, sir. Yeah, okay. You all, kalau nak betul-betul mahir eh, dalam mechanical engineering, you involved in, in in this type of work of the engine. Because you, know, you can find everything. Okay, you can find a lot of things. Right? In our what we have learned about fluid, material, eh? uh, static, dynamic. Everything is when you design an engine, everything is there. The element of mechanical engineering. Okay, there is your attendance, guys. Please sign in. Any question? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Kau tak ada soalan, then when you sign in, then we will meet again on Wednesday, inshallah. Okay, bye-bye guys. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Thank you, sir. Okay, welcome. Thank you, sir. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, doctor. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Alright, welcome.